I have absolutely no plan whatsoever. Oh dear. Okay. Whatsoever. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> I was just thinking, bringing uh, three old men together. Yeah. Yes. Talk, talking about how, how beautiful everything was back then. Uh, Speak for yourself. I'm, I'm a young buck. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. yeah sorry. Uh, no. Two two old men. And, yes. Uh, yes. No. I, I am old. I am a boy scout. Too, I am yeah. old. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 yes. Uh, but no, I mean, it's, uh, d it's an interesting topic how much things have changed over the years. I mean, I would always say that the, uh, the biggest change is whenever I started, it was on Solaris uh, in the office. And uh, it was a commercial C++ compiler. And it was the, uh, the Rogue Wave C++ libraries, if you remember those, which cost real money. But, you know, the, there was no way you could go home and train on what you were using in the office. You know, everything was commercial. Everything yeah. cost real money. Whereas uh, these days, everything you can get from open source or there's a community edition or, you know, so uh, you can get better on the technologies you use at work in your own time. And I think that's a, that's a tremendous change for the better. You know, so. so it is for the better that now you can work from home. So now you're not done when you leave home. Well, that's the dark side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, so, the, yeah. yeah, I mean, that, that, that one depends on where you are in life. Mm. So for me, that's actually, I'm okay with that because when I go down to take a coffee break, I can see my kids and I can see my yeah. wife. Mm. Yeah. As soon as the day is over, I'm playing with my kids mm -hmm. and chatting to my wife. Mm. So for me, it's pretty good. Mm -hmm. But um, but I know some of the young guys, younger, I should say, because I'm still young. Some of the younger guys, you know, like at their stage of life, they want to be in the office, they want to be socializing. The, the social aspect of work is, is very, very important. Yeah. And both for them growing in their career, but also just for living. I mean, I remember whenever I was young and, and working in companies that like we were going out after work all the time, we were going for meals, we were doing this and that. Mm -hmm. um, so I can understand for them it's very different, but for me it's, it's suiting my lifestyle where I am right, right now, you know? And I can, I don't mind the fact some people have trouble they're like, okay, but my my home is now my office and I can't get away from my office. But I don't know, I, I never really switched off totally. I still always check my mail and would do work. And I we all have laptops, so the laptop was always there anyway. Yeah. So now I just have a better desk at home. That's really the, the only difference. I, I possibly have a very unhealthy lifestyle because, you know, I started out with a philosophy degree. So I, I was mostly self-taught in IT and I always felt under pressure in the office because I wanted to stay on and kind of teach myself some of this stuff, but everybody was leaving the office, you know. So uh, it's great being able to do self-education at home, even if that's not entirely mm -hmm. healthy, you know. And then uh, I was self-employed for 10 years. So you get into the habit of doing 15 minutes of work and then 15 minutes of family and going backwards and forwards and uh, I don't even think about it anymore you know um, I may keel over from a coronary and then I may think about it at that point <laughs> I, don't, uh, I don't know if it's an entirely healthy way to work but uh, definitely from 10 years of freelancing I got used to half an hour of uh, you know really focused you know co coding or courseware development or you know what whatever I was doing and then half an hour of family time and just going backwards and forwards so, yeah. but Starting with Solaris, mm -hmm. that means that you are very young and new in this game, doesn't it? When was mm -hmm. that? Uh, late, uh, late 90s, I think. Yeah. So, oh. yeah. 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 So, uh, I, uh, I started in about 95, I think. But when I went to, first went to college, you know, so I, I did a master's in IT after my philosophy degree. So, uh, I think it would be like 97 or something like that was my, my first job. But yeah. Uh, but yeah, I did Solaris was the first version of Unix I used commercially anyway. So yeah, yeah I was I was in Nortel in two thousand. So yeah, I I remember again. So I I think a lot of things are better now. So I remember starting there and being three weeks without a machine mm. and just having to read books because they hadn't a machine for me and learning their internal proprietary language because you know you don't have you don't taken off the shelf language you write your own oh so it's uh, terrible yes, terrible yes, thing yes, yes. yeah yes. Pro, pro tell yeah. um so by by the end of the three weeks i knew that language inside out <laughs> and then they sent me on a training course but i had like you know i'd learned the language as so i was asking all the corner case questions all the yeah, so you knew version one of that language yeah I, well yeah. I, I i i knew like the language and i just had uh 
a backlog of, of tricky questions because those were the bits that I couldn't get from the mm. manual. Mm. So yeah, I'm sure now as a, now as a, a mm. professional trainer, I would have hated myself because yeah. it's like, the, you know, day one, we're here to teach you this language and like start off with the tricky questions. So yeah, I yeah. would have hated myself back then. So now, yeah, as Garth says, like now you just have equipment and build mm. times and tooling and documentation, all of these things that just allows you to get productive really, really quickly. And the attitude yeah. I find, well, again, it does depend on the company, but certainly for the company we work for, like the attitude is very supportive and about bringing people along and educating people and giving them all the information that they need. And yeah. it's it's different than than I think yeah. but years I mean, ago yeah, when I, mean, I started. If, if you think back to the 90s, if you were doing, ju just to pick on Microsoft, because I worked for a you know, Microsoft uh, partner company originally, but um, you remember you had to get the MSDN CDs, you know, the, the mm -hmm. Microsoft documentation yes. came yes. in the CDs and there were updates every few months and you ended up with a pile of exactly. CDs this yes. high, you know, and uh, if you weren't an MSDN subscriber, you didn't get the special knowledge. And then there was a Microsoft, uh, Microsoft Systems Journal, MSJ, mm -hmm. it was originally, and then it became, MSDN magazine and then all the books and so on. So if you didn't have that information, um, whereas these days, I mean, you could in theory put somebody in a room with just them and, uh, you know, give them a decent laptop and an internet connection and put food under the door, you know, and uh, if they were sufficiently motivated, you know, they could come out after 18 months or two years with all the skills they needed to be a developer, just from online tutorials, just from the, the open source and community editions, but they would be able to train themselves up in exactly the same frameworks and IDEs and libraries and so on that they, they were using in the workplace. I'm not saying do it that way, <laughs> but you know, the, the fact that it is actually possible, I think is a tremendously good thing. So. But the other side of the world, the sun world, mm -hmm. was the hilarious part. Mm -hmm. That was not different. You could be sun certified this and that. Mm -hmm. They had a whole mm -hmm. list of certifications. Oh yeah, absolutely. That was just yeah. the same as the yeah. MSDN CD. Yeah, yeah, no. absolutely. Yeah. No, I'm just picking in Microsoft because I, I remember the uh, the MSDN CDs sitting in a big yeah. rack in the corner of the office. But uh, absolutely, I mean, Solaris was worse. You know, I, I remember thinking, could I get Solaris at home? You know, and looking it up and it went, yes, you can get a Solaris laptop for a mere 15 or $20,000. Yes. You know, and I was yes. like, oh, oh, okay, maybe not. Yeah. <laughs> but there's still, I mean, today there's still... There's still money to be made. There's still gold in them. There hills. You know, mm. you can, you can get your Scrum certification. You can that's get your the same. AWS. That's the same thing. That's that's yeah. still the same, I guess. Yeah. You know, there's still people who look for those. I mean, f for us, we're always looking for capabilities rather than the pieces of paper. So we're even hiring people who who don't have degrees, but they just have the passion for it. They're self-taught. As long as they can do the job, that's that's the most important thing. You know. Mm -hmm they're enthusiastic and they're thinking logically and they're a team player, then yeah, come, yeah. come on board. It, it will be interesting to see where it goes with the cloud because, you know, I, I worry about there's a scenario where we go back to where we were before, where, uh, you know, at the moment you could self-educate yourself in Java or C Sharp or .NET or whatever. And of course, you can get like an Azure or an AWS account and so on. But modern architectures are made up of so many interconnected services, you know, that mm. there's, there's kind of toy serverless learning and then there's real serverless learning. So I'm worried that we get to a stage where where you can only do real serverless learning, you know, uh, at scale in the office. You know, that's the only practical way to do it. So um, I don't think yeah. we're there yet, but I think that's a, that's a danger. You know. But if you look through history, it has always been um, client server based architecture mm -hmm. and then everything should be desktop and mm -hmm. one single computer. And mm -hmm. suddenly again, it should be Background client server. Again. and yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But that's it, you know, the, we, we aren't so good at predicting the future. That's why it's, you can have ideas, but it's not, you shouldn't put all your eggs in one basket because who knows what's around the corner. I mean, we do see what happens with quantum, you know? I mean, that still hasn't really become mainstream yet, but if there is a major breakthrough and we find sort of standard applications for these things, that would be, again, a paradigm shift in our, yes. in our industry. Yes. So these things, you know, the unknown, unknown, unknown unknowns, you, you don't know what's going to happen. So I just try to enjoy myself along yeah. the way. Yeah, you can only predict the future <laughs> from, from your current context. Yeah. Yeah. And, the, and, and that's why we tend to laugh at Star Wars movies. Yes. Because it's like the early 80s technologies mm. just predicted it mm. into some... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The future. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I was watching Terminator with my kids recently, and, huh. yeah. and it's like in the 90s that the world ends, isn't it? Yes. yes. It's, <laughs> like the, it's the, like the late 90s that the machines take over, yes. and I'm like, yes. oh. 
I'm still waiting. <laughs> but, but I think product management has suddenly become such an important thing because uh, you know, the, the users are starting to catch up with us because we haven't had a platform shift, you know, because everything went to the web and then everything went to mobile and then everything went to the cloud and then there hasn't been a real major platform mm. shift, you know, so uh, um, clients are starting to expect quality features and interactivity and proper design and so on, which means we need a platform shift mm. really soon. Yes. <laughs> yes. I mean, yes. And, and energy consumption might be something that mm. makes us think a little bit again because we're using such managed languages now. Mm -hmm. You know, you have your JavaScripts and your Pythons and these kinds of things, um, and to a lesser extent the JVM and, and uh, .NET languages. Um, but that that is less efficient. So maybe there will be a paradigm shift where we say, okay, this energy problem is a real problem and we need to start writing more efficient code and we need to start getting back to native and things like Rust yeah. could become yeah. the, the main say. I mean, who knows? Or, or it goes the other way and we go up a, a level where everything's completely managed in our behalf. You know, mm. any, any time performance comes up, there always seem to be two arguments. And the first argument is take absolute control, you know, understand mm. what's going on at the low level and work efficiently. And then the other argument is give up control completely, you know, have a runtime mm. that, uh, that efficiently manages everything for you. So I agree we could get go one way or we could go the mm. other. And then, of course, you have things like serverless, which, you know, gives us massive scalability and better better utilization of limited resources. So uh, these things could be the other way that we manage the problem. You know, yeah. Yeah. Everything goes to the cloud. But does it actually end up being more efficient in the long run when you've got you know a cloud of thousands and thousands of services out there and you don't know entirely what you're doing and you can't and you can't claim it's optimized and you end up with things running for longer than you thought they'd be running for or no, distributed you, databases you can't turn no, off? No, you just and, accept yeah. that things are happening outside of your uh, yeah comfort zone basically yes. yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 i remember you once told me that you started out way before that with the with uh, the good old uh, oh the uh, spectrum um, 48k um, yeah, yes yeah, yes yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, yes. yes. That. well that was the thing i uh, I, I went in and out of programming so i taught myself to program when i was 12 13 yeah. something like this with the uh, the spectrum 48k yes, with yes. The, uh, the the rubber keys yes and so on. amazing so, machine we yeah. tried uh, we were actually looking at if we could get uh, sir clive sinclair Mm. to come and talk ah. at the conference oh, some wow. years ago. Yes. But I guess yes. that chances. Sadly, yeah, yeah, he's yeah, passed yeah. away yeah, now. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, um, amazing man, amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I was, I had the Amstrad. I was a 64K Amstrad. Yeah. With the that was a big machine. Yeah. With the 128K mm -hmm. boost on the back, the mm -hmm. expansion pack. What processor was that? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, it was, um, it, we had the 464. I can't remember what the processor was. But it was in the, the Z eighty one, was it? Maybe. Mm. No, this no the Z eighty. That was the Spectrum family. Yeah, but so I think Amstrad, it might have been, Was it a different chip? Yeah, was it a sixty five ten? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. But he. I guess you can't, I can't remember. I guess whoever watches this, they have yes. no clue what <laughs> we're talking about. <laughs> Fix it in post. Yes. Let's look it up. Yeah. Okay, let's record one where we say it's every chip that we know, and then whichever one is right, we'll add it into the video. But, but that's how. But that's how I started to oh, program good. that. Yes. Yeah. 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 But were yeah. you doing assembly or were you doing it in basic? Well, it started out in basic, and then mm. I uh, quickly I moved into assembler because the mm. Commodore sixty four, the basic was mm -hmm. so so basic. Yeah, yeah. The basic was so limited, so you needed to know the memory map of the machine, yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. and yeah. So you that's you just that's went into that. No, I, I remember yeah. remember sitting until three a.m. with all the lights off, and my parents thought I was asleep, and I was there uh, typing, typing in. in from these magazines. Yeah, to typing in <laughs> yeah. for Space Invaders. Yeah, yes, you yes. Know. And if you made one error, it is. Well, that, that was the thing. I tried to run it, and it said syntax error at line 30 and I went what's the syntax error you know and that yeah. was the beginning of my programming career yes. yeah, yeah. So lines and yes. lines of data yeah. lines and lines of data yeah yeah yeah, yeah that was a good part when it was yeah. like uh, just uh. those typing in the numbers and if mm. you were lucky whoever created that has made a kind of a checksum yeah, yeah. But maybe not. Yeah, no, yeah. Of, <laughs> oftentimes <laughs> not. Yeah. And it just, just wouldn't work. And you're like, okay, uh -huh. let's start going through these numbers. You know, yes. and you, get to, yeah. you get your brother to call out the numbers as you're like going across, you know. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, but, but even then, you remember you had like the uh, the, the wars where the, the Spectrum people hated the Commodore people, and then uh, yes. everybody hated the BBC Micro people because that meant your parents were posh, you know, and you'd, oh, be, yeah. you'd had it bought. But even yeah. then, within the Spectrum community you know, there, uh, in the UK, there were the people who read um, Sinclair User, yeah, mm. and then there were the people who read Crash, and they were just gamers, you know, and they weren't to be associated Amstrad with. Amstrad Action, Amstrad yeah. Action, that was where it was at. Yeah. But the BBC, the BBC Micro still is a better keyboard than the new MacBook. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> it was a proper keyboard. You knew you were pressing yeah. keys back in those days. No, I, I, re I remember doing the computer class at school and being outraged to discover that the basic of the BBC Micro was different from the uh, basic of the Spectrum. And it was like, it was what? BBC yes. Basic? Yes. 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 Yes, yes. Yeah. yes exactly. Yeah. 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 That was not good, but uh, yeah, I did a I did a project in school in BBC Basic. Mm -hmm. It was very good, yeah. yeah. And then I started offering off my services to other people in the class. That was my first consulting gig. <laughs> was in school helping yeah. people program their their BBC Basic programs. Yeah. But you remember they had, they did the thirty for the thirtieth anniversary of the BBC Micro, and uh, they they did it on the the BBC News, and the number of people who rang in to say we're still doing ours. You know, well, we still do our monthly accounts on the BBC uh -huh. Micro. And it's, what? So. Yeah. so, but I mean, nowadays, the, the, you know, that was our way to get into programming, but nowadays there's so much out there, you know, that's why I think, I, you know, I have nostalgia and I wouldn't change anything, but nowadays things are, I think, are better. You have Cohen's online, so you can just go on. Mm. You have in-browser interpreters, mm. partially yeah. written programs, you fill in the gaps. Yeah. You know, if, if anyone has a passion for this industry, they can they can get into it, you know. There's, there's, but I still have no a barriers. feeling that yeah. back then you were closer to how you were closer mm. to the machine mm. room for sure, yeah. yeah. And it actually helps me today. Yeah, but I don't yeah. know if you need it. If you actually need it, if you start today. Yeah. Well, I think I think it it, it it definitely gives you a better understanding of what's happening. So, like even when you're working with managed languages, and some languages are closer to the metal than others like so for example in C sharp you know in the latest versions in C sharp 8 and, and 9 like you can do stack allocs so you can allocate small arrays on the stack frame so you don't have to do mm -hmm. garbage collection and mm -hmm. you know you're getting references to pointers and you can make copies of arrays but they're not copies they're just references into the structures so you know all that stuff that I remember doing when I like worked with pointers and stuff like that all still is applicable today and but do you know do you actually know how that works if you don't have that basic understanding of the memory and memory map? And I, think, I think you can learn it, but most people don't have to learn it. Most people don't have but to But if learn you want it. to be really efficient, dealing with pointers and oh. allocating on the stack and in the mm. heap and whatever, yeah. so, so I would if claim you, you need to know what it is. You do, and I think, I think in, those, in those professions, you know, if you're doing games or you're doing high performance or you're doing you know, these sorts of things, You'll have to do it because that's part of your job. Is is you have to understand that you know contiguous memory is better, and you know skipping garbage collections or allocating up front, or you're working on hardware with limited resources. You just have to. Mm -hmm. But in our industry, if we look at like the percentage of jobs where that is what people are doing, it's it's a tiny, tiny, that's tiny true. fraction. That's so true. the noise yeah. that we hear, or the talks that we hear, mm -hmm. we the work that we hear people are doing is not this kind of thing. Most people are. Yeah. Building REST APIs and front ends and you know or simple yeah. mobile apps. So that's yeah. not what people need um, for for you know most of the jobs that are out there. But mm. it's still super fun. You know, it it does like, annoy me as an educator though that you know computer science is what you do at university and then it stops. <laughs> you know and yes. uh, there's yes. any number of courses that you can do in industry, but it's new languages, new frameworks, agile project, you know, uh, techniques, uh, all this kind of stuff. But you're going to find it very hard to book a course in algorithms or something like that, or the, mm. the mathematics of computer science or whatever, you know. So uh, academics who are experts in these things don't venture into industry and people from industry don't venture into academia. You know, it seems like there's mm. a, a big wall there that's very hard to, uh, to cross, which but is a shame. But it's interesting though, because mm. we, were, we were down in the bookstore downstairs 
and like the Gang of Four book mm -hmm. is still there. I saw they were piling yeah. up. Yeah. And, high, and so I saw that this morning and I thought, yeah. are, you, are you still yeah, selling them? What, 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 if what, there what, was what, ever a book no, that no. needed to be rewritten, it's <laughs> that book. It's the way all the examples start with. Let's say yeah. you were writing a word processor. Yeah. No, 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 let's, yeah. let's not, you know. So. But, it's, but it's got the little tassels so you can mark your page. I love it. It's, yeah. it's like a Bible or something. Um, yeah. And but there, but there's algorithm books and things like mm -hmm. this as well. So th it's still out there mm -hmm. and people mm -hmm. still love this kind of things, but it's a smaller percentage of our industry. You know, we were talking earlier and our industry is everywhere. It runs everything. So every company is an IT company. Mm -hmm. So of course, maybe the things that, you know, that we learned growing up, you know, when it was more niche mm -hmm. are still niche today because the demand is still, uh, you know, a small percentage of what the world needs right now. And what the world needs is lots of websites and mobile apps and REST services and, well, and lots of plugging things together, but it's mm. it's not it's not the same. It's still necessary work. I still prefer the fun of these other things. So there. It, it yeah. does annoy me though when people use it as an excuse. You know, when they say, "Well, why didn't somebody learn this at college?" And you go, "Well, we're a very varied industry." You know, but you don't get that in other kinds of architecture. You know, I'm sure an architect doesn't get employed to build a skyscraper and say, "Oh, I've only ever done bridges in the past." Sorry, you know. So uh, mm. maybe it's mm. time we segmented the industry better and split it up into different subgroups. Maybe, in some way. maybe. Yeah. Well, that's why I uh, I like the. Um, the ideas of quantum computing mm -hmm. and the state of that now mm. because that forces me to drive back to the basics mm. to understand yeah. what is a gate what yeah. can you do with it yes yeah, yeah. and i think yeah. that's a wonderful chance to um to Get reboot on the ground floor to, yeah, 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 yeah 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 no it, it yeah. is it is fascinating and every time though that i've looked at it it has completely fried my brain. Yeah. yeah. So again, maybe maybe I'm too old now. But, yeah, but, but imagine I've got too much. All my experience is weighing me down. Yeah. So we need someone who's like a like an empty vase, who will just drink that up, you know. <laughs> yeah. So so what we need to do is get rid of you and hire a really smart sixteen-year-old kid. Yeah, is what we're well, saying. Maybe. So, yeah. yeah. That's <laughs> that's it. You know, like it'll be it'll be it'll be my son. Yeah. Who will like be tinkering with some. You know, late at night on some free quantum computer, and then mm. he will get those fundamentals, and you know. Yeah, but imagine if you if you could move back to 1948. Mm -hmm. mm. Uh, mm. Look at what what was a computer back then. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. It would yeah. be just the same. It would completely fry your brain, as you just put it. Yeah. yeah. Because uh, you didn't have a programming language that you programmed these by combining NAND gates mm. with wires. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, yeah. It's completely the same. Yeah. yeah. But now you see, because that's the thing, so I am now, I'm now biased and skewed by my experiences. So if I had to go back and do that, I would be like, oh, I'm so unproductive. You know, I don't have IntelliJ autocomplete for, <laughs> for these kids. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't think they had it. <laughs> you know, I don't then, think so. No, no. So, so would, I would feel like, oh, this is too hard. This is too, this, yeah. you know, yeah, but that's the difference because mm. back then, those that could program the thing, that was mm. the engineer that built it. Yeah, yeah. He was the only one. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. The yeah. The, um, the formal software mm -hmm. educations, we didn't have them until yes. I guess yeah. the seventies. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And that's the, and that and that's the thing. So, you know, now the next generation won't have to do the things that we did necessarily, mm -hmm. but they'll still be productive and they'll still be doing hard problems, but they'll just be different problems. You know, yeah. and they won't be, uh, they won't be um, held back by the fact that they didn't do what we did mm, in the yeah. same way as we weren't held back because we didn't design circuits and yeah. work with yeah. with gates directly and. Well, I mean, but we see this right now. I mean, we uh, we train a lot of graduates, and you see some people who've done like a pure computer science degree, and they've done like three or four years of Haskell. You know, that's been their yeah. main language, and and they solve everything in a purely functional way. And you're trying to show them a for loop, and they're like, well, "What is this yeah. mad, crazy yeah. voodoo?" You know, take yeah. this away from me, old man. You know, yeah. and uh, you're going to have people who went straight out of college and into an AWS job or something like that, and you give them a problem, and they'll they'll see it as a you know, a cloud native solution yeah. as a, a bunch of things deployed yeah. out there on the server. Mm -hmm. So the, that's the perspective that you're brought up with that, you know, affects so much how you uh, you view a particular problem. Yeah. So. But this is why the circle comes complete now, mm. because you mentioned that you were a philosopher. Yes. yes. In the very early days. And this mm. is pure philosophy now. Oh, yes. Because yes. that is actually how society works, mm. that we accumulate knowledge yes. so we don't have to teach.
cheats every mm -hmm. each and every generation from mm -hmm. yeah from yeah. zero yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah stand on the shoulders of giants yes exactly yeah yeah, yeah. 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 giants like us yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> although I'm I'm always fond of the the saying that you spend the first twenty years of your life accepting everything you're told yeah you spend the second twenty years of your life realizing everything you were told is wrong you know and then you spend the the third twenty years of your life working out what you're going to teach the next generation that they will come to despise you for. Mm. So that's uh, the, that's what we do. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I think I've just like, I, I've sort of accepted this and mm. then I'm just trying to steer my career and try to do the things that I enjoy because, mm. you know, you just, you just got to pick the things that you enjoy and go after them. And yeah. even if that is not the most popular framework or the most popular technology, just whatever you find fun because life's mm. short. Enjoy yeah. it. Yeah, no, yeah. yeah, absolutely. That, that yeah. really displays our um, our position in this world, mm. the privilege, yeah. the privileges that we have. Yeah. Yeah. So we are inventing yeah. our own problems by yeah. saying, I don't like that programming language, I prefer that over that. Mm. Mm. Imagine what, yeah. Yeah. what other people have to struggle with mm -hmm. every day. Yes, yes. Yeah. we should be super, super grateful. Yeah. Yes. Because, yes. yeah, this profession, you're, you're it's doing incredibly well, but it's mm. also really enjoyable and yeah. is you know incredibly sought after right We're now. We're spoiled so kids. We really, yeah. we really yeah. are. Yeah. Yeah. But I think that's, I think that's okay as long as you don't get complacent and and form a bad attitude over it. I think as long as you're grateful yeah. and sort of realize it and remember it every day, I think then that's fine. Well, I think yeah, you, yeah. you also have to acknowledge how much stress there is in the IT industry as well, because I mean, it's uh, especially in the current environment. I mean, a lot of the companies that we worked with as software development companies, they had the privilege that they could keep going, you know. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, you know, the pandemic was happening around them and they were still continuing doing their their day to day nine to five job remotely, you know, trying to pair program over the, the network and so on. And that uh, that imposed all kinds of stresses on them as well. So yeah, well, maybe we need yeah. that. Maybe we need someone to shake us from time to time. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Like a good old fashioned pandemic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, I think... Um, <laughs> Where were you in March? <laughs> yeah, yeah, March yeah. 2019. But I think uh, uh, if you go far enough in IT, everybody ultimately becomes a philosopher. If you look at the, the keynote, one of the best keynotes I have ever seen to a conference, you know, that we had uh, yesterday, that was stunning. But that, that was a work of philosophy. Yes, yes you know, wasn't and, it? Mm, and yes. if you look at what uh, Kevlin Henney, you know, likes to talk yeah. about and Dan North likes to talk about and so on, there's, a, there's an awful lot of philosophy in there as well. So mm -hmm. uh, I think if you stay in any industry long enough, you get more and more obsessed with distilling every everything down to the most fine, basic, straightforward, primitive atomic principles that you can and refining things and trying to pass something on and trying to raise the, the level of consciousness and understanding and so yeah. on. So uh, yeah. eventually you will end up doing something that counts as philosophy. You know? yeah. So yeah. I just got there early. You, know? yeah, yeah, you yeah, guys yeah, are all, yeah, all, yeah, yeah. all late to the party. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> if only I could code, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it'll come, it'll come eventually. <laughs> <laughs> you just need a good teacher. Yes, yes yeah. exactly, exactly. Yes, exactly. Yes. I need to find somebody to teach me to code. Yes, yes. yes. that's good fun. Yeah, yeah yes, <laughs> yes, wasn't yeah. it? Yes, yes. brilliant. Thank you so much. Cool. You know, well, so. thank you.